ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Wayne and Holmes County High School Sports Awards, brought to you by The Daily Record. Talent will always be found. It doesn't matter where you play uh, or, or where you're from. Uh, when you have talent, people will find you. Some of the biggest names in the world of sports come together to honor the best high school athletes in the country. Alex Morgan, Katie Ledecky, Aaron Rodgers, Sue Bird, Shaquille O'Neal. Now do you know my name? Yeah, you know, well, you know, do you know my name? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Fire, fire, fury, fury, power, power. My name is, my name is, uh, legend. It's a celebration of athletic excellence from those who know it best. Here are your hosts, Heisman Trophy winner and ESPN analyst Desmond Howard and the host of NFL Live and SEC Nation, Laura Rutledge. Hi everyone and welcome to the show. Tonight we get to celebrate one of the most passionate and exciting groups in all of sports, the high school athlete. That's right, Laura. An incredible list of all-star talent has signed on to help recognize these amazing men and women. We're talking Aaron Rodgers, Alex Morgan, Chipper Jones, Sue Bird, Katie Ledecky, and the big man himself, Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> I love it. You know, I actually think it's illegal these days to have a sports award without Shaq in it. I think you're right. So I'm glad he's on board for our show tonight. Of course. And the Diesel has something in common with everyone else on this show. At one point or another, we all went to high school. True, and while the time since high school has been a while, uh, for some more than others, <laughs> we all still remember the hopes and dreams and even the challenges of that memorable time in our lives. And tonight we all return to high school to cover a lot of sports and give out a lot of awards. If two people showed up to cheer for it and those two people were your parents, we're celebrating it tonight. So ditch the backpacks and summer reading lists and forget about that pop quiz you bombed in third period French last semester. <laughs> it's time to celebrate some of the best high school athletes in the area. Of course, none of this will be possible without the generous support of our sponsors. And you can't have a celebration this big without a little flexing going on. That's why we have sports broadcaster Abby Labar keeping an eye on the land of the humble brag. Thanks, Laura. And speaking of bragging, we know you love to, and we love to see it. So tag us in your social posts, share photos and videos from your own celebrations using tonight's hashtag. Posts on Instagram or Twitter will be shown on the social media feed on the show website. Okay, so we know every award show needs a red carpet. And lucky for us, two former college football players agreed to host ours tonight. If you don't know them as football players, well, you probably know them better from another little gig they had. The Bachelorette and The Bachelor, my friends, Tyler Cameron and Matt James. Thanks, Abby. Matt and I are so excited to be here. We got out, got dressed up, and stepped into our freshest kicks to walk the red carpet. Wait, are those my shoes? Bro, you put them in my closet. I'm wearing them now. Tonight we get a chance to salute some show out high school athletes. So who's handing out the roses? I mean the awards tonight. Mm. Careful now. We talked about this and we let that go. We were playing sports long before our bachelor days, so we know how exciting this must be for you. But tonight's not about us. It's about the athletes of today. The records they're breaking, the bars they're raising, and the names we'll be reading and remembering in the future. So let's hear from them right here on the 89 Homes red carpet. And even though we're not strutting our stuff and getting the inside scoop on the live red carpet, we got pretty creative. That's right. You guys shared your favorite moments from the past year straight from the source. Roll it. My most exciting moment in my high school career is shooting 728 at the OC season from the OCC Bowler of the Year. My favorite moment 
memory with my teammates has to be winning sectionals at the Elms Country Club. One of my favorite memories with my teammates is when we raised enough money in the fundraiser. Being on a team is like having an extra support system when you're down on yourself. My best memory with my teammates was when we all went to the Mansfield Reformatory. Thanks for sending those in. We love hearing your stories. All right, let's get this party started. Back to you, Lauren Des. Thanks, guys. I don't know about you, Desmond, but I'm ready to start giving these kids some of their hard-earned awards. Hey, let's do it. We're going to kick things off in the pool. Here to help us dive right in is one of the most decorated female swimmers in U.S. history, the legendary Katie Ledecky. Katie Ledecky burst on the competitive swimming scene at 15 years old. At the London Olympics, she took home the gold and the first of many Olympic medals. She's added four more golds, 15 world championships, two NCAA titles, and a whole bunch of freestyle world records. The recent Stanford grad is back in the pool, training for Tokyo. Everybody, Katie Ledecky talking to all you swimmers and divers out there. I know a lot of the world puts us all together in one big group because we spend half of our time in the pool and the other half of the time trying to get chlorine out of our hair. But we are a very diverse group. Divers launch themselves off of boards and platforms of varying heights and swimmers employ a bunch of different strokes and distances, each with its own unique demands. That's why I'm here so I can speak to all of you individuals and tell you the key to success in your water world is to always, always, always keep moving forward. Except, of course, anyone who competes in backstroke or performs back dives, that advice would be very bad for you. You guys keep going backward. That sounded weird. I'm gonna go back in the pool. I'll leave all you divers to your diving and your backstrokers to your backstroking. I'll see you later. Here are the honorees for the Female Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Female Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year for Wayne and Holmes County is Gracie Chelf of Wooster High School. Wooster's Gracie Chelf claims the top spot as the best girl swimmer in Wayne and Holmes County. The junior was one of the best swimmers in the state all year and put together a great performance at the Division I state championship. She finished in the top 10 in the 50-yard freestyle and the top 20 in the 100-yard freestyle as well. She punched her ticket to the state championship and additionally, she won the sectional title in the 50-yard freestyle where she broke her own varsity record. Congratulations, Gracie. Here are the honorees for the Male Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Male Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year for Wayne and Holmes County is Jaden Boucher of Wooster High School. Wooster's Jaden Boucher claims the area's top swimmer honor after a fantastic final high school season. The senior led his school to a trip to the Division I state championship where they competed in the 200-yard freestyle relay. He and his teammates finished just outside the top 20 of that race and finished in the top 30 overall at the meet. He helped his school finish in second place at the Ohio Cardinal Conference championship meet back in January. Congratulations, Jaden. If you had to name the sport that most pro athletes choose to play when they're not at their paying gig, it would have to be golf. It doesn't mean they're good at it, <laughs> but it doesn't mean they're as bad as Charles Barkley either. But we decided to tap someone who makes their living driving for show and putting for dough. Here's Ryan Palmer with the Golf Awards. Four-time champion Ryan Palmer is no stranger to success. On the PGA Tour, where every week is a battle of attrition, he's taken home four tour victories, 11 runners-up, 67 top 10 finishes, including two in the majors.
Hey all you golfers out there. PGA Tour winner Ryan Palmer here to hand out the golf awards. But before I do, I want to point out something about golf compared to other sports. Listen, I get it. There's no buzzer or beating golf. No one is throwing the ball 100 miles an hour at you and no one is going to smash into you at the top of your swing and throw you to the ground. That's all true. But there's something awesome about golf that you can't find in a lot of other sports. If you've got a couple of hours to spare, you can play on the same courses that Tiger, Phil, myself, Annika and MB, or even Rory and DJ play on. Try shooting hoops with your friends at Madison Square Garden. Or play nine innings at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. Let's hear it for the game of golf, the legendary venues are open to all. Here are your honorees for the female golfer of the year. And the finalists are And the Wayne and Holmes County Female Golf of the Year is Ashley Ragusa of Worcester High School. Ashley Ragusa helped Worcester make it to the sectional tournament. Her nine hole scoring average of 44.1 was number one amongst golfers in the area. She shot a 93 at the sectional tournament. Congratulations, Ashley. Here are your honorees for the Male Golfer of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Male Golf of the Year is... Brixton Hummel of Berlin Highland High School. Brookston Hummel captured the 2020 Division III Individual State Championship and led Highland High School to a second place finish overall. He had two birdies in the final round and saved par the last seven holes he was Highland's number two golfer all year, but he came up big when his team needed him most. Congratulations, Brixton. A lot of sports have similar concepts and equipment, boundaries, balls, and scoreboards, name a few. But there are two that make use of sand. One is golf, where it's to be avoided, and the other is beach volleyball, where it's embraced in all its gritty glory. Here to lend a hand with our volleyball awards is someone who knows achieving greatness is no day at the beach, Carrie Walsh Jennings. Carrie Walsh Jennings, also known as Six Feet of Sunshine, is covered in Olympic gold. The 42-year-old SoCal standout is the most decorated beach volleyball player in Olympic history. She and her former teammate, Misty May Trainer won three gold medals and five world championships earning the title, the greatest beach volleyball team of all time. Hey everybody, Carrie Walsh Jennings here. I know this looks like a volleyball, but in reality, it's a ticket to your future because the lessons you learn hitting this sucker around will come in handy down the road. Things like teamwork, determination, goal setting, you're going to need all of those skills. And then, there are the friends you make with this. Ones you'll have for the rest of your life. Priceless. So don't think of it as just a volleyball. Think of it as your secret weapon for success. And your honorees for Volleyball Player of the Year are... And the finalists are... And the Female Volleyball Player of the Year for Wayne and Holmes County is Sarah Ice of Waynedale High School. There were plenty of standout volleyball players in Wayne and Holmes County in 2020, but nobody dominated like Sarah Ice. The Waynedale star led the Golden Bears to a 21-4 record. Despite suffering a back injury halfway through the year, Ice powered through to return for the playoffs. Even while missing 35 sets during the season, I sent home 274 kills. Congratulations, Sarah. There are some athletes today who have been so dominant, you only have to say their first name for everyone to know who you're talking about. They become celebrities, giants of their sport. That's right. 
Our next presenter was an athlete like that during her long career. She made her mark as a teenager, practically ruled at Wimbledon, and was still taking home major titles at the age of 49. The name Navratilova will be in the record books for years to come. But for so many of us, all you have to say is Martina. Martina Navratilova is one of the most dominant players to ever swing a racket. Born in the former Czechoslovakia, the former world number one, claimed 18 Grand Slam singles titles, added to her 31 doubles and 10 mixed doubles, 59 major titles are the most by any player, male or female, in the open era. Hey everybody, Martina Navratilova here to tell you that you picked a great sport to play in high school because it's a sport that you can play your whole life. I mean, look at me. I'm still out there on the court all the time playing for hours and I'm like uh, 60, never mind. You know, you can see by my hair how old I am. My hair is thinning, but anyway, I don't know why I did that. Um, because you guys can just Google my name and kind of figure out how old I am and then Instagram me about it, whatever. Um, anyway, all the effort that you are putting in now, it can pay dividends well past your competitive playing days. Remember, you can love other sports, but tennis is the only sport where love is literally part of the game. Here are the honorees for the Female Tennis Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Female Tennis Player of the Year is Claudia Adcock from Orville High School. Orville High School's Claudia Adcock capped her excellent high school career with a trip to the Division II Single State Tournament. She got there after falling one match short last year, and she became the first player in program history to qualify for the state tournament in singles. Congratulations, Claudia. Here are the honorees for the Male Tennis Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Male Tennis Player of the Year is Curtis Wagner of West Holmes High School. Curtis Wagner had one of the best seasons in West Holmes history in 2021, qualifying for the state tournament after a runner-up finish at the district tourney. During the regular season, Wagner went 17-2 as the number one singles player, dispatching other number ones with ease. He also won the sectional tournament, making it a season to remember for the senior. Congratulations, Curtis. Bruce Springsteen once topped the charts with his iconic album, Born to Run. But for this ultra marathon man, those aren't words that you sing. Those are words you live by. Presenting the awards for cross country, Dean Karnazes. Dean Karnazes, the legendary Badwater Ultra Marathon champion, running 135 miles through Death Valley in 124 degree heat. He later ran a marathon at the South Pole. This superhuman and best selling author has run 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days. Hey guys. Dean Karnas is here to talk a little cross country, but first, a quick confession. I only ran cross country as a freshman in high school. Our team won the state championships, and I figured that I couldn't top that, so I stopped running. Until later in life. Now I've raced and competed on all seven continents. But enough about me. This is about you guys, the best cross country runners from across the country. Here are the honorees for the female cross country runner of the year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Female Cross Country Runner of the Year is... 
Piper Gibson of Rittman High School. Piper Gibson won a district title in 2020. The Rittman High School star finished in the top 25 at the state championship and third at the regionals. She also won the Wayne County League Championship. Congratulations, Piper. Here are the honorees for the male cross country runner of the year. And the finalists are And the Wayne and Holmes County Male Cross Country Runner of the Year is J.J. Varner of Waynedale High School. Consistency was the name of the game for J.J. He peaked at the right time of the year. He won the district meet, placing 13th in regionals, and then finished 11th at the Division III state meet to wrap up his junior year with a bang. Congratulations, J.J. Hi, it's Lori Hernandez here. Now don't dismount. Stay on your beam because gymnastics awards are right around the bend. Are you guys hungry? Yeah. All right, let's get some apps. Let's do it. It's as easy as that. Let us refill for you. Hey, you go, guys. Wow, that was so fast. Thank you Enjoy. so much. Cheers, guys. Hey, I'll be right back. Okay. No one likes waiting in long lines or missing the big moments. We're making it easier for you to get back to what you love without missing a single minute. Refill. Did I miss anything? Desmond, yeah. follow me here. Okay. The Four Horsemen. Mm, murderer's Row. The Steel Curtain. Broad Street Bullies. Oh, good one. <laughs> Five Slamma Jamma. The Splash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you did good at that game. Certain groups of athletes stand the test of time, not just for what they did, but for how they did it. Yes, and to present our award in gymnastics, we're honored to have with us a member of another iconic ensemble from that golden quintet of the Rio Olympics. Here's Lori Hernandez. Lori Hernandez, a member of U.S. Women's legendary Final Five gymnastics team, helped bring home team gold and earned a silver medal for herself at the last Summer Olympics. The Jersey Girl is back, competing again on the world stage, and as many know, she also took Dancing with the Stars by storm, finishing as the season 23 champion. Hey, what's up guys? Lori Hernandez here, and I am honored to give some love to gymnasts from coast to coast. This is an Olympic year, so our sport gets some time to shine in prime time. Don't get me wrong, that's a great thing and all, but for you guys, it doesn't matter what year it is. You're in the gym, putting in all the hours on the floor, beam, bars, horse, vault, and the rings, because you all know that perfect routine is out there. And if you love that chase of perfection, then you'll definitely have mad skills in whatever career path you choose. You hear people say, leave it out all on the floor. Well, I'm here to tell you that even if you get a perfect 10, a lot of what you learned in gymnastics comes with you off the mat and into the real world. So congratulations on a great year and let's give out some awards. Here are your honorees for the gymnast of the year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Gymnast of the Year is Rachel Furlong of Worcester High School. Worcester's Rachel Furlong was in a class of her own this season. That's the reason why she claims Wayne and Holmes County's top gymnast honor. The senior made it to the state meet for the third time in her career. She finished in the top 20 in the vault competition, the top 30 in the uneven bars, and the top 25 in the all-round competition. Furlong is headed to the University of Oregon to join the school's acrobatics and tumbling program. Congratulations, Rachel. 
We have loved seeing how you are celebrating. Thank you for posting and letting us celebrate with you. Keep posting on Instagram and Twitter using the hashtags for a chance to win an autographed gift from one of our featured guests tonight. Now let's hear from some honorees with our friends, Matt and Tyler. Thanks, Abby. One thing you can say about us athletes is some of us tend to be a little superstitious. Some eat the same thing before every game, some listen to the same music, some people even wear the same sock for every game for years. Really? Bro, the Dude. Sam's Club socks? Come on, the bro. The thick cotton ones? I know, but we had socks from our school. And you wouldn't like wear them. You would stink up the whole place because you wouldn't even wash them. You'd forget to wash them. You still do the same thing in my apartment. In any case, we want to hear from some of the greats. Let's see what they've done to lock in the wins. I, I think I used to have like a ton of rituals. Well, I'm a pitcher, and so we're kind of known for um, being a little different. <laughs> I had my special hair ties. I would have to shower before every competition. I've always had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before I played. Um, I pretty much just put on my right sock before my left sock, my left shoe before my right shoe. I never touched the lines. I always warmed up 27 minutes before game time. But my one, I guess, like pregame ritual would be that I always pass with one particular teammate, Lauren Moyer. I didn't have any rituals or lucky anything, and I tried to stay away from those things because luck scares me. There are some things in certain playlists that might last an entire season or might uh, you might listen to a certain playlist that you made and lose or have a bad game and that thing gets uh, gets erased pretty quickly. I do do three claps on the blocks typically before I, I start my race. Like if I do something before a workout, before a competition and I notice that I had a good day, I now have to do said thing until the meet is done. I mean, obviously all rituals are a mental thing, but they were a big part of my preparation. Kind of like Dumbo's feather, like you don't need the feather to fly. You have it within you. 30 minutes before game time, um, yeah, it's embarrassing. Four chocolate chip cookies and an orange Powerade. Well, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. So before any tournament or round, I always watch a highlight reel of Mark Leishman, my favorite golfer. So my game theme ritual is putting my right sock into my left sock and then my right shoe and then my left shoe and then putting on my left shin guard and then my right shin guard. Well, for tennis, especially for my high school team, we are not allowed to listen to music when we are warming up with our opponents. For practices, we are allowed to listen to music. It just depends on the day. I choose to warm up by dancing. It gets me motivated and gets me ready to practice. Well, that certainly was <laughs> educational. Whatever it takes, right? Yeah. Uh, what about you, Desmond? I would think a Heisman Trophy winner would have some good pregame rituals. Did you do anything? Yeah, you know, it's pretty silly and goofy, but I used to put everything on in the same particular order. No matter if we're home or away, like the right sock and the left sock. You know, it's just, I know it's ridiculous. I do it now, even when I put on my suit. So, you, I put so my... you put your suit on in that particular order that you used to put your uniform on today? That's what you did? Absolutely. Well, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> All right, that was very good. So moving on, let's get to our next set of awards. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. I'm never going to suit up in a goalie gear and stand in front of a 100 mile an hour slap shot or block Shaq's shot. But I have put on a pair of tricolor rented shoes and rolled a ball down a grease lane with some friends. So with the help of legendary Chris Barnes, let's go bowling, man. Chris Barnes, the Kansas native, has claimed 19 PBA Tour titles during his 20-plus year bowling career. This 2018 PBA Hall of Fame inductee has rolled 55 perfect games and is the only bowler in history to win Collegiate Player of the Year, the PBA Rookie of the Year, PBA Player of the Year, World Cup Champion, and the World Singles Gold Medal. Hey everybody, Chris Barnes here to give a much deserved shout out to my fellow bowlers. For some reason, bowling doesn't seem to get as much love out there in the world as some other high school sports. I for one can't think of a single reason why that would be. As the fastest growing high school sport in America, it seems times are changing. In our sport where perfection is an attainable goal, an accomplished bowler will always have a keen eye, laser-like attention to detail, and they'll have to make all parts of their game work together to be in absolute harmony with their surroundings, just like an athlete in any other sport. 
So I'm not sure why there is often this subtle lack of respect for bowling out there in the media. Maybe it's the shoes, but at least we don't have referees, right? Here are your honorees for the female bowler of the year. And the finalists are The Wayne and Holmes County Female Bowl of the Year is Abby Leyendecker of Worcester High School. Worcester's Abby Leyendecker is only a freshman. She's already the best girls bowler in Wayne County. She claims the area's top girls bowling honor after being named the OCC Bowler of the Year. Lion Decker led Worcester to a second place finish at the OCC Championships and was named a member of the first team all OCC squad. She led her team to an eighth place finish at an OHSAA sectional tournament. Way to go, Abby. And now for the guys lane. Here are your honorees for the male bowler of the year. And the finalists are And the Wayne and Holmes County Male Bowl of the Year is Justin Parks of Worcester High School. Worcester's Justin Parks separated himself in 2021 as the best boys bowler in Wayne County, and that's why he secures the area's top boys bowling honor. Parks led Worcester High School to a sixth place finish at an OHSAA sectional tournament, and he put together a three game set that landed him in the top 20 of all bowlers at the competition. Congratulations, Justin. When you're on the track, you know records are made to be broken. And legends can be made in a fraction of a second. That's why you always have to come with your best. You never know when it's your time to make your mark and when the world is watching. And the world definitely watched our next presenter. He remains the only man to win gold in the 200 and 400 at the same Olympics the one and only legendary sprinter, Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson, this Texan dominated sprinting for most of the 90s. Of his 16 major international medals, not a single one isn't gold. After becoming the first and only man to defend an Olympic 400 meter title in Sydney, and to this day, the US records in the 200, 300, and 400 meters still bear his name. Hey everybody, Michael Johnson here to help celebrate the amazing achievements of the athletes from the friendliest sport there is, track and field. I know all those other sports will be mad that I said that, but think about it. When most sports have teams come together to compete, they call it a game. Some call it a match. But when we compete, where do we do it? At a meet. You can't get much more friendly than a meet as far as competition goes. Speaking of which, it's time to meet our honorees. And the finalists are And the Wayne and Holmes County Female Track and Field Athlete of the Year is Brianna Chenevy of Dalton High School. Dalton High School's Brianna Chenevy is only a sophomore, but she took the area by storm in 2021. She came in second place in the 200 meter dash at the Division III State Track and Field Championships, and she won the regional title in the 200 meter event, finishing in second at districts, where she set a personal record. Congratulations, Brianna. And now for the guys' side. Here are your honorees for the Male Track and Field Athlete of the Year. And the finalists are And the Wayne and Holmes County Male Track Athlete of the Year is Lane Graham of West Holmes High School. 
West Holmes High School's Lane Graham won the Division II state championship in the discus with a personal record of 185. He finished in second place at regionals, second place at districts, and won the Ohio Cardinal Conference Championship. Graham's senior season will be remembered for a long time. Congratulations, Lane. It is called The Beautiful Game, and we're three and a half billion soccer fans, that's right, billion with a B, <laughs> around the world. I think you have a hard time arguing with that description. Just like no one can argue that Alex Morgan is one of the most accomplished players, man or woman, in the history of the U.S. national team, and the perfect choice to present our soccer awards. When Alex Morgan steps on the pitch, it is game on. With a knack for late game heroics, Morgan's goal and extra time in the semifinals of the London Olympics helped propel the U.S. to gold. She would go on to win the World Cup in 2014 and 19. Soccer, presented by Schmidt's Service Now. Hey everybody, Alex Morgan here. I've been so fortunate with all the things I've been able to do thanks to soccer. And you might be looking wide-eyed at that list of accomplishments, so it might surprise you to know that in this interaction we are having right now, I'm the envious one. I'm not kidding, because you guys are in or just finished high school, and I absolutely loved my time in high school. It was Dunbar High School in Southern California. Go Brahmas! Our colors were purple and gold, and our cheer was loud and proud. Yeah, that stuff stays with you. I'm envious because high school is special. You guys have your whole life ahead of you, which is scary, but also really exciting at the same time. So congrats on all your accolades and just try to really enjoy the ride. Your older self will thank you, trust me. Here are your honorees for the Female Soccer Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Wayne and Holmes County Female Soccer Player of the Year is Sydney Barnett of Chippewa High School. Chippewa's Sydney Barnett was named the Division III All Greater Akron Co-Player of the Year. She was also honored as a United Soccer Coaches All-American, and the senior led her team to a district title in 2020. Congrats, Sydney. And now for the guys' side. Here are your honorees for the Male Soccer Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Male Soccer Player of the Year is Jaden Boucher of Wooster High School. Jaden Boucher was named a first team All-Ohio player in Division I. He scored 13 goals and dished out nine assists, and the senior captain was the heart and soul of the Wooster High School team. Congratulations, Jaden. Hey guys, it's Aaron Rodgers, and I'll be handing off some football awards in just a bit. Maybe I'll be saying your name, so stick around to find out. Excuse me? Hey, how's it going? Can I, uh, can I get you a drink? Uh, no, I'm just up here to order some food. No, please, I, I got this round. Hey, can we get a couple drinks down here? Hey, buddy, can we get some drinks? These guys are slammed today. We'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah, what's you drinking? Can I buy you a drink? Guys, seriously, I'm just trying to order some fries. Hey, man, I, I'm i getting her a drink. No, no. No, I mean, I, like, I, I'm, sure. I'm getting her one Thanks. right now. Yeah, there you go, man. Hey, girl, I got you. Wow, thank you. How did you get these so fast? I ordered it through refill. What's refill? It's a new fast and easy way to order your food online. Oh, you can just order it right from the bar. Yep. And I bring it to you. Absolutely. Incredible. Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Now, Laura, you know they say defense wins championships. I know you won't get any argument about that from our next presenter. But even if you did, I'm pretty sure you'd let him win that argument. Yeah, I'd sure stay out of his way. Also, those people haven't met you. But anyway, here to present the Defensive Football Player of the Year is TJ Watt. 
TJ Watt, the youngest in an NFL family dynasty, was drafted in the first round by the Steelers in 2017 and became the first rookie to start at linebacker for the black and gold in more than 30 years. He has earned three Pro Bowl selections, led the league in sacks in 2020, and is a two-time Defensive Player of the Year finalist. Hey everybody, it's TJ Watt, giving some much deserved props to the defenders out there. We all know that the offense is the one everybody likes to talk about and read about during the season. But over the long haul, history looks back kindly on those who defend. Think about it. The heroes of the Alamo, they were defenders. The iconic and beloved lawyer Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird, defender. Even one of the early super popular video games back in the 80s was called, you guessed it, Defender. And how do you describe a talented player on the other side of the ball? You call them offensive, like a bad smell or a horrendous outfit, like that uncle who always jokes weirdly at Christmas. So keep doing what you're doing out there in the field. People may go nuts for the quarterbacks today, but they'll always remember you defenders for years to come. Here are your honorees for the Defensive Football Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Defensive Football Player of the Year for Wayne and Holmes County is Ty Williams of Hillsdale High School. Ty Williams broke the Hillsdale High School record for most career tackles. His 105 tackles this season helped him break that record. The senior was named the WCAL Player of the Year. Congratulations, Ty. A big thanks to TJ Watt for helping us out with the defense. And before we move on to offense, I was thinking, you know, Desmond, if I could get you, mm -hmm. TJ, and our next presenter on my flag football team, yeah. I could go ahead and just plan the victory dinner before the season even started. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, man, I love to run routes for this guy. His accuracy and creativity as a signal caller make him a receiver's dream. So more on my flag football team later, but he is one of the best and has certainly carved out a place for his name in the record books. Here to present is legendary quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Super Bowl champion Aaron Rodgers holds the league's lowest career interception percentage and the highest single season passer rating in history. The nine-time Pro Bowl selection was also named the NFL's most valuable player last season, the third MVP trophy of his illustrious career. Hey everybody, Aaron Rodgers here to hand out some awards to incredibly deserving high school football players. Of course that got me thinking about all the things I love about our sport. You know, one of the most underrated aspects of football, the terminology. I mean, we got the blitz, the bomb, the sack, wild card. We spike, we trap, we fly, we Hail Mary from time to time, those are fun. No offense to other sports, but while they dribble or bunt, we hit the hole and shoot the gap. They can't stand tall with a Statue of Liberty or transform a turnover into a touchdown with a fumble rooski. So what do you say, we get in victory formation as we salute some amazing athletes from the gridiron. Here are the honorees for the Offensive Football Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Offensive Football Player of the Year is... Amir Cunningham of Norway High School. Amir Cunningham was a first team all Ohio player. The Norway High School senior was a huge reason his team went nine and one. He will continue his career at Ashland University. Congrats, Amir. Imagine for a moment what it would be like to go through your day carrying around something that weighs the same as you do. Now imagine that weight isn't playing nice and is fighting you the whole time. It would get pretty exhausting pretty fast. Welcome to the life of a wrestler. Here to help us award these masters of the mat is freestyle Olympic champion, Kyle Snyder. 
Kyle Snyder, aka Captain America, in 2016 became the youngest Olympic gold medalist and world champion in American wrestling history. He helped Team USA win its first world championship in more than 20 years. He'll be repping the red, white, and blue again when he attempts to defend his freestyle Olympic gold in Tokyo. Hey everybody, Kyle Snyder here. If you want to have a long and successful wrestling career, you have to embrace a concept that is foreign to most Americans. I'm talking about kilograms. That measure of weight that school children and the rest of the world use with ease, but adults in the US can't seem to wrap their heads around. So if you already have a handle on it, you're ahead of the game. It's kind of like learning the language of your opponents. Here are your honorees for the Wrestler of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Wrestler of the Year is... Sevi Garza of Rittman High School. Rittman's Sevi Garza closed out his high school career with a state championship. The senior went 41-0 in his final season as a high school wrestler and won the individual state crown in the 170-pound division. Garza's state win marks the first time in school history that a boys wrestler has won a state championship. Congratulations, Sevi. A lot of today's sports come from purely recreational origins, not lacrosse. Created by Native American tribes, what we call lacrosse was used to train warriors and even has some religious significance. Today's popularity is absolutely exploding, thanks in no small part to our next presenter, lacrosse legend, Paul Rabel. Paul Rabel, the lacrosse superstar and legend, has seven championship titles through his college, professional, and international career. The three-time MVP co-founded the Premier Lacrosse League, changing the game of pro play for the fastest growing team sport in North America. What's up all you lacrosse players out there? I'm Paul Rabel, and I've seen a bunch of your highlights and was blown away. You guys totally do your talking on the field, which is where you want a lacrosse player to do their talking, which got me thinking, why am I talking here instead of giving awards to you guys over there? So let's do this. Here are your honorees for the Female Lacrosse Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Female Lacrosse Player of the Year goes to Leah Sanchez of Wooster High School. Worcester High School's Leah Sanchez had several big-time performances this year, but one of her best came in the playoffs against Bay when she scored six goals in a 13-10 victory. She's headed to Capital University to continue her lacrosse career, and Sanchez was one of the best athletes in school history. She'll be sorely missed. Congratulations, Leah. And now, for the guys. Here are your honorees for the Male Lacrosse Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Male Lacrosse Player of the Year is Cooper Laughlin of Wooster High School. Worcester's Cooper Laughlin led the team in goals as a freshman. Laughlin has starred for the top team in the area since the first game of the season. With three more years to go, Laughlin has a bright future ahead of him, looks to continue his dominance for years to come. Congratulations, Cooper. We all have that person we look to for inspiration that drives us to be better, that in turn helps us become an example for somebody else. 
and the cycle keeps repeating. Let's take a moment to hear about some of the people who've inspired athletes at every level. Hey guys, we're back. So let's talk about role models. Being that person who inspires others is what it's all about. It's one of the main reasons why we started ABC Food Tours, to share experiences, become mentors, and help kids in our communities. I mean, it's one of my favorite things we do. Give back to the kids, have fun with them, learn from them, teach them a little bit, nothing better. Yeah, it's, it's been super rewarding. You know, it's a lot of the lessons that I thought that I'd be teaching these kids is what I've learned from, learn from them. Exactly. Yeah, so mentoring, you learn a lot by giving, but you also learn a lot by receiving. Exactly. Even the pros have role models. Let's hear who inspired them and who they looked up to. My role model was Lisa Fernandez. Her standard of excellence was so high. Peekaboo Street was mine, and without her, you know, I don't know if I would be where I am, so I'm very, very grateful to her. My role model is Alex Morgan. My parents inspire me because they raised three strong daughters. My role model growing up was Cal Ripken. He was the all-round player. He was the rookie of the year. He was an MVP. He was a world champion. All things that I wanted to accomplish in my career. My fiance Megan is also a little bit of my role model. Um, just to see how she carries herself. I have a front row seat to it. I tried to change it to a real model. I look up to people who are authentic. You know, I always tell kids it's good to admire somebody. If you like what they do, steal it. My role model are my parents and siblings. My role model is my father. Both of my parents, going back from day one, driving us all around, both of my brothers and I. And my older brother was a great athlete, and uh, I was always chasing after him. I think the memory of my mom, uh, because she was always so kind and, uh, and so smart. The military. Um, and their effect they had on me and my rehab. You hope that as an athlete you can have a positive impact on the community and there's ways you do it vocally, through social media today, and most importantly through action in the communities. And so to potentially be that for somebody else uh, obviously is an amazing feeling. I credit my athletic success to Adam Shoemaker, my head coach up at Paramount Tennis Club. He brought me out of my shell and taught me that if I work hard enough, anything is possible. My athletic role model is my sister, Alex. The person that I look up to is like just people that work hard and like chase their dreams and like, you know, work hard for what they do and what they want to do. My coach taught me to work hard and have fun playing the game that I love. Modern, custom, you. In fact, 89 Homes puts the U in custom and has been building dream homes for 40 years. See standard features that will wow you at 89 Homes at 30 and 89 in Jeromesville or just start dreaming at 89homes.com. Softball might be the most misnamed sport there is. First off, the ball isn't soft at all. Just ask anyone who's ever been hit by one. Secondly, pitchers routinely hurl it over 70 miles an hour, standing only 43 feet from home plate. So don't confuse softball for being soft. To present our next set of awards, here's legendary pitcher Jenny Finch. An icon of the diamond, Jenny Finch caught the nation's attention pitching the University of Arizona to a national championship in 2001. Three years later, she was on the world stage, helping lead Team USA to the gold medal at the Athens Olympics. She would later collect a silver medal in Beijing and go on to boast an outstanding pro career on her way to the National Softball Hall of Fame. Hey everybody, Jenny Finch here with a question for all you softball players out there. Why can't they make a great sports movie about women's softball? Is it really that hard? I mean, our smaller sphered cousin baseball has tons of them. Sure, there is that comedy all-stars, but that's really more about the parents than it is about the players. Even a league of their own is about women's baseball where there is no crying, not softball. It makes no sense. Our sport provides plenty of drama, I don't know about you, but I've met some unforgettable characters in and around the diamond. And you have a built-in audience dying to see their sport up on the silver screen. So for any of you softball players out there with a mile-wide creative streak, start gathering some fun stories, start putting together some characters, and getting them down on paper. And let's see if we can make a movie about the greatest sport in the world, softball. And while we wait for that, Let's give out some awards. 
Here are your honorees for the Softball Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Softball Player of the Year is Haley Massaro of Triway High School. Triway High School's Haley Massaro is only a junior, but she separated herself as the best softball player in the area. The shortstop had a monster junior year at the plate, and she's committed to play softball in college at Ohio State University. Congratulations, Haley. In 1936, Major League Baseball became the first professional sport in North America to establish a Hall of Fame as a way to remember the grace of the game from every generation. Induction to the Hall is seen as the highest honor of an extraordinary player's remarkable career. To present our baseball awards is first ballot Hall of Famer, Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones was selected by the Atlanta Braves as the number one overall pick in 1990 and went on to become a mainstay in a Braves dynasty that claimed 11 consecutive division crowns and a World Series title. He captured two Silver Slugger awards and was the National League MVP in 1999. Hey everybody, can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of this presentation to all you hardworking baseball players out there. I also want to say how impressed I am at all the stats you guys use these days. Y'all have a measure for everything. When I was playing, we didn't talk much about range factors or wins above replacement or bequeath runner scored. Heck, we didn't even know what bequeath was. The only time we ever talked about launch angle was if we happened to see the space shuttle taking off. And exit velocity was how fast the fans left after big locks. But by embracing all the statistical analysis, you're getting new insights into this great game. You're also probably getting a lot better scores on your math tests, so keep up the good work. And don't let your Babbitt affect your Woba, whatever that means. Here are your honorees for the Baseball Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Player of the Year is Jaden Varner of Waynedale High School. Jaden Varner was named the Division III Player of the Year because of his great season on the Diamond. He led Waynedale to a county championship and a second place finish at Districts. Varner was the biggest reason why his squad went 22 and seven. The left-hander has a bright future ahead and will continue his baseball career at Kent State University. Congratulations, Jaden. Hey, we're gonna have some fun with you. Basketball is a wars coming up. Modern, custom, you. In fact, 89 Homes puts the U in custom and has been building dream homes for 40 years. See standard features that will wow you at 89 Homes at 30 and 89 in Jeromesville or just start dreaming at 89homes.com. Many of the athletes featured tonight will continue their athletic careers in college. But our next presenter's talents were so prodigious that the professional leagues couldn't wait. To hand out our basketball awards, we have the big ticket himself, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, dubbed Mr. Basketball USA in 1995, was the first player drafted by the NBA straight out of high school in more than 20 years. This 15-time All-Star earned MVP and Defensive Player of the Year honors and an Olympic gold medal. Here he is, the big ticket himself. Basketball, presented by 89 Homes. Hey, KG here. I know all you girls and guys have worked really hard in high school. I've totally earned all the props and recognition you're getting. But no matter how long you play this game, know one thing they will never teach you at any point along the way is how to give out awards. I tell you right now, it's not easy. Scrape that our country is a melting pot and we have people from all over. But that also means that 
The names can be pronounced a million different ways. So be kind to the big ticket, if you will. If I accidentally uh, mispronounce your name or if I don't get your name right perfectly, I mean, no disrespect. Uh, I have just seen these winners' names and I'm gonna try my best, okay? So let's get to it. Here are some honorees for the Female Basketball Player of the Year. And the finalists are Female Basketball Player of the Year for Wayne and Holmes County is Zoe Miller of Highland High School. Highland Zoe Miller claims Wayne and Holmes County's top girls basketball honor after earning the Division III Player of the Year Award, first team All-State honors, and helping her team to the Division III state title. The senior was nothing short of spectacular during her career at Highland. She's committed to Bowling Green University and will pursue her basketball future there in the fall. Congratulations, Zoe. And now for the ballers on the guys' side. Here are your honorees for the Male Basketball Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Wayne and Holmes County Male Basketball Player of the Year is Jalen Wenger of Dalton High School. Dalton's Jalen Wenger was in a class of his own this season. That's why he claims the top boys basketball honor for Wayne and Holmes County. The junior was named the player of the year in the Wayne County Athletic League. He was the biggest reason why Dalton was 19-4 overall and 13-1 and in league play. He had a game with 37 points this season and already has over 1,000 career points with another season of high school hoops still ahead of him. Congratulations, Jalen. Courage truly means so many things. Overcoming challenges is the very essence of sports. But there are times when adversity comes after the whistles have blown and the horns have sounded, and it's devastating. The Courage Award is given to an athlete who has faced tremendous hardship and through their strength and tenacity, were able to rise above it. Courage means getting up after you've been knocked down. Failure is refusing to get up. Courage is getting up and doing something about it. Courage means being uncomfortable and being okay with that. Be willing to take a chance and maybe go against the flow. To put, put yourself on the line for something. I was always taught that courage means doing the right thing when no one's looking. Courage means stepping out of your comfort zone. Courage means you're fearless. Courage means facing your fears and saying, I'm not scared of you. Courage means doing the right thing all the time, not just when people are watching. Courage can mean that you're just not afraid to make mistakes. Not the absence of fear, but, but I think confronting your fears. One of my favorite quotes is by Mary Ann Radbecker. It says, courage does not always roar. Some days, courage is the little voice that says, I'll try again tomorrow. In 2018, a traumatic on-field leg injury threatened to end Alex Smith's professional football career and his life. After 17 surgeries, a lethal infection, and two years of grueling rehab, he stepped back into the huddle to help lead the Washington football team to an improbable playoff berth. Here to honor our recipient and present the 2021 Courage Award is a man who is no stranger to hardship himself, 2020 NFL Comeback Player of the Year, Alex Smith. There are a lot of ways to define courage. For me, courage is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. And the grace exhibited by our Courage Award winner is something to behold. Courage can be found overcoming a sudden and traumatic event or conquering a lifelong condition in ways the rest of us can't even imagine. What makes this athlete truly amazing is that they shared their very difficult, very personal story in order to help the next person who has the same brutal hill to climb. They found a way to turn courage into something shared, something inspiring, something beautiful. 
And the recipient of the Courage Award for Wayne and Holmes counties is Tucker Kaufman of West Holmes High School. Tucker Kaufman has had a conflicted past year. Since the passing of his father in July, Kaufman acknowledges that there have been obviously some rough times. One such time was when he returned a fumble 83 yards for a touchdown, looked into the stands where his father normally would have been cheering, and realized he wasn't there. Another was when Kaufman won a big wrestling match and it was the same feeling. His dad wasn't in the stands. His perseverance first showed in football season when Kaufman took on the role of top cornerback for West Holmes and had a team best four interceptions. More so though, it was in the football season that his girlfriend Maddie Summer helped him realize that even if his dad wasn't there, he was still watching. Wrestling season came later, and while that message was valuable, the new season also brought a new set of experiences that Kaufman wasn't able to share with his dad. Whereas Aaron Kaufman had been a football player at West Holmes and Tucker had followed in his footsteps, Tucker and older brother Thane were forging their own paths as wrestlers. Of course, Aaron Kaufman was there for their wrestling careers also. Despite never wrestling, he coached them. Tucker Kaufman went 45-5 and in wrestling this past season, setting the school's single-season pin record at 39 and winning the Courage Award. Congratulations, Tucker. Hey, high school sports fans, it's the Big Aristotle here to present some of the biggest awards of the night. So stick around. I've been preparing all week. I really hope I make Miss Swan proud. That's my fourth grade teacher. Definitely don't want to end up in detention again. so many outstanding individual achievements in all different sports from this past school year. But now we focus on the heart of high school athletics, yeah. the team. And a crucial ingredient for success at any level, the coach. Mm -hmm. And to present our awards for the best team and best coach, please welcome someone who is no stranger to success, legendary coach Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer has found success at every stop of his coaching career, including three national championships. He's the winner of multiple National Coach of the Year awards, and this fall, he'll make his NFL debut as head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi guys, we know that good coaches and teams of this world are judged by the wins and losses. We all know that there's a lot more behind the scenes. Strategy, teaching, training, and a lot of pushing. But a coach excels when his or her team truly comes together as one. And you know it doesn't matter what sport you play, there really is nothing like being part of an exceptional team. It's never easy, of course. Nothing worthwhile ever is. The hours and hours of practice, the growth of a unit, going through all the ups and downs, the highs and lows of a season together. When you become a great team, a special bond forms between the players, the coaches, and the support staff. That's like nothing else I've ever felt. Yes, there's some magic needed to make great coaches and great teams, but don't take this old coach's word for it. Let's hear from some athletes who know a thing or two about winning. A good teammate accepts you as you are, yet challenges you to become even better because they see the best in you. A good teammate is someone who wants the same amount of success for you as they do themselves. A good teammate is unselfish. Somebody who always um, stays positive. The way you grow, uh, the way your game grows, the way your IQ grows, uh, a lot of times is, is off the basis of how you're coached. A good coach is consistent. A good coach is someone that can motivate you to do things that your mind doesn't even think you can do. Good coaches understand that their role is not just to, to coach, but to teach, to inspire, and motivate an athlete. 
Okay, guys, they really did say it best. But now let's give out some awards to some who've proven they know what it takes to come together as a team and bring home the win. Here are your finalists for the team of the year. And the Wayne and Holmes County team of the year is Highland High School girls basketball team. Some teams seem almost destined to win a state championship. This year's Highland Hawks were one of those teams, part of one of the great programs in all of Ohio high school sports. These Hawks went into the year with sky high expectations. They believed they should have won the previous year's state championship before COVID reared its ugly head and cruelly shut down the state final four the day before they were set to play. This was a state title two years in the making. And even though it only counted for one, the Hawks knew they needed this one if they wanted to be considered one of the top teams in their school's history, which is no easy task. The entire starting five signed to play college basketball on full scholarships. That starting five of all seniors won 104 times in high school. They lost only 10, including a 55 and two record over their last two years. But to go down as one of the best in school history, they knew they had to win a state title. They did just that, capturing the 2021 Division III title with a 20-point win in the state championship game. Congratulations, ladies. Very impressive season. Now for the Coach of the Year, and the finalists are And the Wayne and Holmes County Coach of the Year is Dave Schlabach of Highland High School. All Coach of the Year Dave Schlabach did for 30 years as Highland's girls basketball head coach was win. It was more than fitting for him to retire as a state champion this year. He won 689 games during his coaching career and ended with a victory, something most coaches never get to do. He went out watching his Hawks win the Division III state championship for the sixth time during his tenure, sharing a hug with his daughter Gabby on the court during the waning moments of the title game. Other coaches may have wished to have the type of talent that he had during the 2021 season, but other coaches didn't put in decades of work to turn a decent program into a dynasty. Congratulations, Coach. Excellent job. All right, guys, the moment we have all been waiting for. It's time to reveal the top male and female athletes of the year. Yes. These are exemplary athletes who have stolen the spotlight, dominated the season, and shown what it means to be unstoppable. To give us a helping hand with the female athlete of the year is the all-time assist leader in WNBA history, the great Sue Bird. Sue Bird has been a basketball superstar for more than 25 years. She earned the Naismith College Player of the Year and a three-time Nancy Lieberman Award winner. Bird was the number one pick of the 2002 WNBA Draft, an 11-time All-Star, two NCAA championships, four WNBA crowns, four Olympic gold medals, four FIBA World Cup titles, plus a dozen or so International League titles. Hey everybody, Sue Bird here. We've arrived at my favorite part of the show. Female Athlete of the Year brings together the best of the best, all in one award. It's kind of like that scene in Endgame when all the female heroes assemble, only instead of lasers, swords, and tricked out suits, you gals have sports equipment. But you get the idea. The point is you have all excelled in your individual sports. You have all overcome obstacles standing between you and success and you all have earned our lasting admirations. So really, there is no downside here. Just one of you gets a little bit more of an upside. But you all leave tonight winners. All right, let's meet our finalists for Female Athlete of the Year. Haley Massaro, a junior from Triway High School, Zoe Miller, a senior from Highland High School, and Kelsey Wolf, a senior from Waynedale High School. And the Female Athlete of the Year for Wayne and Holmes Counties is Zoe Miller of Highland High School. 
Sometimes an athlete only needs to play one sport for her athletic excellence to stand out above all of her peers. That's the case for Zoe Miller. Playing on a Highland Hawks team full of future college basketball players, Miller stood out in the crowd. When her team needed a bucket in a close game, it went to Miller. And when the Hawks needed a big rebound, Miller would go get it. She finished her career as the school's all-time leading rebounder and third all-time leading scorer. There's a reason Miller was named the Division III Player of the Year for the entire state of Ohio. A three-time first-team All-Ohio selection, Miller achieved all the individual awards she could want during a career, but finished it with the one that meant the most, a state championship. She led her squad to its sixth state title. Congratulations, Zoe. Now let's meet the contenders for Male Athlete of the Year. With so much incredible talent on display, we needed somebody of equal stature. So our final presenter of the night needs no introduction. Yeah, but we're gonna give him one anyway, because if we don't, I know he'll call us out and he'll say, hey, there's uh, Rutledge, why, why did you throw the deal some love? Wow. So here to present our final award of the night, the one and only Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, the big Aristotle himself, is feared by opponents and loved by millions. Shaq's combination of size, speed, and strength led to four NBA championship rings, an MVP title, 15 All-Star Game appearances, an Olympic gold medal, and a first ballot invite to the Hall of Fame. What's up everybody, Diesel in the house, representing for all the major athletes out there in high school. It's time to give out the best male athlete award. Anytime somebody wants to put the word best next to your name, that is a major sign of respect. It means they know you do hard work to be great, but also you pay attention to detail. It means you rise to the occasion when your team really needs it. It means you make your parents proud. So let's give it up for the male athletes who are vying for the title of the best. And the finalists for the Male Athlete of the Year are... Sevi Garza, a senior from Rittman High School, Tyler Petterini, a senior from Wooster High School, and Ty Williams, a senior from Hillsdale High School. And the Male Athlete of the Year for Wayne and Holmes Counties is Sevi Garza of Rittman High School. Nobody embodies what it means to be a top high school athlete more than Rittman's Sevi Garza, a state champion on the wrestling mat and an all-league selection in baseball and football. Garza was relentless as a senior. He didn't lose in 41 matches, most of the time not even coming close. Four times he faced Wayne County's second-best all-round wrestler in Waynesdale's Peyton Lemon, and four times he prevailed. It might be a cliche, but anyone who was around Garza would tell you nobody worked harder. During baseball season, Garza would drive up to an hour away during the week after practice to work on his wrestling craft. His father, Ray, said he never had to motivate him to work. Garza simply has always done it, and it showed during wrestling season and beyond. In addition to becoming Rittman's first wrestling state champion ever, Garza was the top football player for the Indians as well. On the baseball diamond, he was Rittman's ace pitcher and top hitter. There wasn't much Garza could not do, and there wasn't much Garza did not do. Congratulations, Savi. What a great night. We have had so much fun celebrating your accomplishments. And we want to thank all the parents, guardians, teachers, and role models who have helped these amazing young adults get to where they are today. You're all so important. Exactly. And to all the athletes, coaches, and winners, congratulations. Yes. Until next year, that's a wrap. Yes. <laughs> advice I'd give to my high school self would be don't sweat the small stuff. I would tell my high school self to take time and enjoy the little things. 
High school flies by, and before you know it, you will be an adult. <laughs> so have fun and enjoy the time with your friends and family. Well, there's a couple things. I think one would to tell myself to be yourself. And a lot of times that's a lot easier said than done, but I know looking back, I was like every other high school kid, trying to figure things out, you know, seeing what your friends are doing, seeing what your family's doing, trying to see where you fit in. And I think a lot of times um, as kids, you know, we don't have the confidence to just be who we are. Only surround yourself with people that you respect, that you love, that love you back, that support you. You've got to have positive enforcement in every way around you. Continue to be a leader and not a follower. Continue to do right things in the community, in schools, uh, around other student athletes. It's supposed to be fun. Work hard, put everything into it, but make sure that you have joy when you compete. It's not about the outcome, it's about competing with all of your heart for something that you love. The outcome, the results will take care of themselves if you do that. So make sure you have fun, have fun with your team, rejoice in each other, rejoice in your talent, and just go for it. I think I would tell her first and foremost to enjoy the process and have fun and stay present in the moment. Um, and then I would say to challenge herself and to kind of run towards her fears and get uncomfortable. I think that that's where um, people learn and grow the most is making mistakes, um, taking advantage of the mistakes as an opportunity and learning from them. My advice would be make the most of your high school experience. How you do that, it's about people, it's about relationships. Be yourself and be a leader before being anything. We, Les and Lori Miller of 89 Homes, appreciate the opportunity to be a sponsor and partner for the 2021 Wayne and Holmes County High School Sports Awards. We're excited to be a part of this great event, showcasing the talents of many local athletes. Congratulations to all honorees. We appreciate the hard work and dedication you've given to becoming the best athlete in your particular sport and particular position. Your dedication is to be admired, not only as a student and athlete, but also as you step into your profession, regardless of your career choice. Congratulations. We wish you all the very best.